Hello, New Beginnings family. Hello, Facebook family. Hello to all of the visitors that have joined us and to everyone watching throughout this week. We invite you into the presence of God. Apostle has been saying for the past few weeks and wanting to engage with you in setting the atmosphere for the Spirit of God to move in your home. Now, let me tell you, the Lord is going to be moving today. And I want you to be ready for that. He's going to be moving in such a mighty and powerful and strong way. You will not be the same if you're prepared for it. And I want you to get prepared for that. Get your heart ready. Get your spirit ready. Get your mind ready. We're going to be decreeing some things tonight. And I know New Beginnings family, we've been decreeing these things. But there's just something about a corporate declaration of victory and a corporate declaration of war against the enemy. And I want you to be prepared to engage tonight. Engage with everything that is within you in total agreement in the profession of our faith, in the profession of victory, in the profession of getting those things that God has promised us. He said that he's promised things to those who love him. And that's you, that's me, that's everyone that's watching this video right now. Because I know it's not by accident that you are here today, but it is by the will of God. I want you to be ready. Let's gather in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you in one mind and in one accord. God, we don't take it lightly, but we come before you humbly and we thank you for the wonderful opportunity. God, help us to gird up the loins of our mind today. Help us to prepare our hearts to receive victory, to profess faith. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I want you to have your decrees ready. We will be declaring those things together in total agreement. I also want to remind you, don't forget to be giving. In a few minutes after the service is almost over and almost completed, we'll have the options pop up on the bottom of the screen. Don't forget to be sending in your tithes and sending in your offering and any seed on Sunday. Such a powerful word. If you didn't hear it, oh my goodness, you have got to listen to that. It was so, so powerful. But they talked about seed and they talked about sowing seed into the word that you know is for you or you, the thing that you want God to do. Sow into that and do that tonight as well. When the decrees are going forth, when there comes time again, when I call it the end for offering or a seed or tithe, give into that because God sees that. He sees you're putting literally your money where your mouth is. You're putting your money where the faith is because God said and where your treasure is there will your heart be also. That's what the Bible says. And I just want to encourage you to do that. And I encourage you to get in one mind and one accord. We're so excited that you're here tonight. And we thank you so much for joining us. Be ready to do those decrees in Jesus' name. Thank you, Hannah. <clears throat> Praise God to everybody that is tuning in, that is listening. I sent out yesterday that tonight we were going to take our decrees and we were going to say them together. Now, I can't hear you. You can hear me, but I want you to get those decrees. I hope you already have them in your hand. And we are going in a few minutes, we are going to say them together because there is such power when we collectively start decreeing things in the atmosphere, there is a power that is released in the heavenlies. And then it is released on this earth. When we come together, Jesus said in his word that if two or three shall agree, that word agree, as you've heard me teach so many times, means harmony or harmonizing. If two or three shall harmonize on one thing. On earth, it will be done. And so that is what we're going to be doing tonight. I hope and pray that you have been doing your decrees, you've been saying your decrees every single day because that is what God told me weeks ago when we first started doing this. It was very important that we do it every single day. But I, I want to tell you something, that there has been a shifting this afternoon 
in my spirit. There's been a shifting. I spent all day, just about all day here, fasting and, and really seeking God. And there were numerous things that I was talking to God about, walking around in this sanctuary, talking to the Lord about. And when I got through, I went back to my office, sat down, put on some worship music, and began to just pray, and, and just the presence of God began to just saturate my office. And God began to speak to me in a very powerful way. He began to talk to me through His Word and began to really highlight some things in my spirit that I thought at first that He was giving me these things that for, to do tonight. But as I continued seeking the Lord, I began to feel that it's for another time. And it could be Sunday or it could be next Wednesday. I, I'm not sure, but I know that God is going to do a great thing tonight. But here's the deal. The release that I felt after tonight, when you start doing your decrees starting tomorrow, I want you in the, in the midst of it, I want you to begin to thank the Lord and begin to praise God. That's what I felt in my spirit this afternoon, that as we are making these decrees, we are going to interject all through those decrees starting tomorrow. We're going to be thanking the Lord. We're going to be saying, God, I thank you. And as we're making those decrees, Father, I thank you that it's done. I thank you that it's come to pass. And that's what I'm talking about. But I want to go over for a few moments. What is the importance of making a decree? Why is it so important? First of all, they make changes in the spiritual realm. They make changes in the spiritual realm. Number two, we are making a declaration that has the weight of kingdom authority behind it. It has the weight of kingdom authority behind it. It puts us into the position of having the advantage. I want you to pay attention to that. It puts us, it puts you. Let me make this personal. It puts you in the position of having the advantage. We are then able to influence decisions and actions. Oh, that needs to be repeated again. Once again, let me make it personable. You are then able to influence decisions and actions. It gives you leverage, which means the power to influence a situation to achieve a particular outcome. I'll say that again. That's what the word leverage means. The power to influence a situation to achieve a particular outcome. And as I taught several weeks ago, prophetic decrees unlocks resources of the kingdom. It unlocks resources of the kingdom. Our words spoken in faith will change atmospheres. That's what I said weeks ago. It will change atmospheres. Or, once again, let me make it personable. Your words, spoken in faith, will change atmospheres, break through opposition, and shift situations into alignment with God's divine purpose. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to repeat after me right where you are. I want you to say, when I say our words, I want you to say my words. Just put yourself in it. All right, let's go. My words spoken in faith will change atmospheres, break through opposition, and shift situations into alignment with God's divine purpose. 
Now, beloved, according to Matthew 18 and 18, it is an expression of kingdom authority. Matthew 18 and 18, an expression of kingdom authority. The spiritual realm must pay attention and come into alignment. The spiritual realm must, I emphasize that, must pay attention and come into alignment. Here's the point. God speaks His divine command. We, as His agents on earth, submitted, declaring on earth what our Lord has established in heaven. Maybe I should repeat that again. God speaks His divine command. We are His agents submitted on earth, declaring on earth what our Lord has established in heaven. That prophetic decree becomes a powerful, creative, watch this, let there be word. I hope you got that. Maybe I should repeat all that again. God speaks His divine command. We are His agents submitted on earth, declaring on earth what our Lord has established in heaven. That prophetic decree now becomes a powerful creative, let there be word. You see, what have I said, especially, I think it was last Wednesday, and I feel it coming upon me again, that when God created Adam and put him in the garden, remember, it was never at the beginning for the will of God for us to go there. It was for heaven to come on earth. It was what was going on in heaven to be established on earth. That is why Jesus prayed, Father, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. And so when Adam was put in the garden, then Adam had the creative word. God breathed into the nostrils of Adam. Other words, the very essence of God. I get cold chills every time I start using that word. The very essence of God, who He was, He put it into Adam. Adam now lived in a creative atmosphere. That's why the Lord stood and watched that as each animal, came by Adam, and he named it. And whatever Adam named it, it stuck even to this day. So Adam had the creative ability that when he spoke, it happened. He named it, and it took place. So once he disobeyed God, thrown out of the garden, now, God needs an earthly entity. He needs an earthly body. Just like God created Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary, a young, virtuous virgin. And when Jesus began His ministry, He said this, I only speak what my Father is speaking, which means that now God had an earthly entity, an earthly body to bring about an established spiritual kingdom. It could not be done until Jesus came in flesh. What did I say a couple of weeks ago? We are God's ambassadors. So God uses us, oh my Lord, 
I'm, I'm reminded again of what Pastor preached about, about the mouth speaking. And this morning, we all, every morning, I look forward, getting up early with my precious wife, and we, I make coffee for her, I serve her coffee, and we sit there, and we're talking about Scripture, and once again, she began to talk about how important it was about the mouth of speaking. And so that, I'm reminded of that again. And so I heard somebody say one time, nothing happens until you speak. And so I'm talking to people that I believe already know all of this. But there's a reason God has prompted me in order, in order to bring it back again. It's to establish what we're fixing to do tonight. But once again, after tonight, starting tomorrow, as you're doing the, the decrees, you interject thanksgiving unto God. You interject thanksgiving unto God. In other words, here's the deal. God said, there was a release in my spirit. And he said, now, I want you to th start thanking me for what you have decreed. And that's the word of the Lord for us tonight. Starting tomorrow, God says, I want you to start thanking me for the things that you have and continue to decree. That it is done. And we're going to see things. Oh, I'm telling you, this, this word that the Lord gave me today. And I began to write page after page after page as God began to download revelation to me. And I'm excited about it. I can't wait for God to give me the green light. Because as I said a few moments ago, I thought it was going to be tonight. But the Lord said, nope, not yet. And so we're going to obey God. Now, we are going to go. I hope you have your Bibles with you. We're going to once again... Go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43. We're going to read verse 18. Do not remember the former things, exclamation point. And once again, what I like about this Jewish Bible is that when, we, when it starts out, do not remember the former things, it's in bold black letters and it has an exclamation point. Then when it says, do not consider the things of old, it's in bold black letters and it has an exclamation point again. So, do not remember the former things, exclamation point. Do not consider the things of old, exclamation point. Behold, I shall do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not know it? I shall even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Now, when God spoke this, I think it was Pastor that was explaining this to us just recently. But when God spoke this, Israel was still in captivity. But God was wanting to turn their perspective around. I said that Sunday. He was wanting them to know what He had already decreed to be done in the heavens. He had already spoke it. He had released it from his mouth. So that's why he tells them, it's time for you to change your perspective. Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. Behold, I shall do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. So when God tells them, now it shall spring forth. He is wanting them in their spirit to step into that now. That in the spiritual realm, it wasn't going to come. It was already done. And so he was letting them know that physically you're still in captivity. But I'm wanting you to change your thinking. 
It, it may not be, you may not be able to change your situation right now, but I want you to change how you look at the situation. I want you to get your eyes off of the situation. And I want your spirit, place your spirit into what he says, now it will spring forth. Not tomorrow, but in your spirit. You're living in the now of God. Now it shall spring forth. And then he goes on to say, will you not know it? So that means for us, it goes with what we're doing tomorrow with interjecting thanksgiving that within our spirit, it is done. And when he says, will you not know it? That our spiritual eyes, with our mind, we see it done. In other words, we're living it. Within our spirit, we're living it. And here's the thing. Once it gets into your spirit, then it will become a conviction. And it doesn't matter if all hell breaks loose. You will not be shaken one iota because within your spirit, you know that it's done and you see it done, that there's no more question, but there is an exclamation point. You put the exclamation point that it is done. And this is what God, starting tomorrow, is wanting us to get a hold of. Because we have been saying these, these decrees, hoping that it's getting done, believing that it's getting done. But God, starting tomorrow, is saying, I want you to believe it's done. And I want you to be able to see that it's done. God is wanting us to be convinced in His Word. Because here's the deal. This is how a stronghold becomes a stronghold. When it gets into somebody's spirit, the longer that it's there, the stronger that it becomes. You know this. And eventually, the spirit takes on the personality of the individual to where everybody sees it. Let me give you an example. If a person has a stronghold of smoking, People are going to see that. They're going to learn he is, he can't do without smoking. If somebody is addicted to alcohol, then everybody's going to see that. He is going to be labeled as an alcoholic. And so therefore, you have to get this down in your spirit. I want you to be able to do it tonight. That you make up your mind. That it's going to get rooted down in your spirit. What did I teach last Wednesday? The need for a stronghold. I'll never forget, right before we went on air, right before you saw Hannah, I told her what my title was, and it kind of shocked her. It threw her back, and she said, oh, that's kind of a reverse situation, and that's what I wanted. But you heard me talk that the need for a stronghold the stronghold is believing what we are decreeing. That it gets way down deep in our spirit. That we see it done. God wants us to see that it's already done. That it's already done. God wants us to see that. And so tomorrow, I want you to be able within your spirit to place yourself in that stronghold of believing that it's done. That when you speak, it's done. And you're thanking God for it. You're praising Him for it. Now, let's read it again. Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. Behold, I shall do a new thing. 
Now it will spring forth. Will you not know it? I shall even make a way in the wilderness, rivers and, dry, and deserts. Now in verse 18, the Jewish interpretation of this, it means this. Listen closely. The interpretation of verse 18. The miracles, this is what God is saying. The miracles of the past will pale when compared to those happening now. Exclamation point. So let me put it like this. The miracles of the past will seem feeble and unimpressive when compared to those happening now. Now, I want you to get a pen. I want you to get a, a piece of paper. I want you to write this down because this statement right here has everything to do with what God spoke to me all afternoon and given me new things to bring before you. That as I said, I thought God was going to release me tonight, but He said, no, not tonight. So once again, verse 18, the miracles of the past will be feeble and unimpressive when compared to those happening now. I'll say it one more time. The miracles of the past will be feeble and unimpressive when compared to those happening now. Exclamation point. Don't forget, that has everything to do with what's forthcoming. Now, I want to remind us, when we hold these decrees in your hand, when you hold your decrees in your hand, if you don't have them, I want you to take them right now. Get them in your hand. When you hold those decrees in your hand, you are holding a court order. You're letting the enemy know, I have legal proceedings which means I'm taking action in a court to settle a dispute. I'm going to put right of an unfair situation. I'm going to be confronting an adverse action threatening liberty or property or health. So, in the mighty, wonderful, high name of Jesus, let us begin. I rebuke, tear apart, and cast out every stubborn demon that would attempt to persist. I come against every stubborn stronghold and command it to yield to the power of God. I put pressure on every stubborn demon and stronghold and break its grip. I command every iron-like yoke to shatter and break. I feel the anointing of God here tonight. I come against all obstinate demons and break their influence. I lay siege against stubborn strongholds through prayer and fasting. I use the battering ram of prayer and fasting to demolish all the gates of every stubborn stronghold. As I lift my voice in praise like a trumpet, let every Jericho wall fall. Through prayer and fasting, fresh double anointing is increasing and destroying every demonic yoke. I dismantle the illegal movements of satanic kingdom. I command in Jesus' name demonic circumstances to bend and bow to the will of God. I rebuke the toughest of circumstances and demonic roadblocks 
that would withhold God's blessings in. I come against selfish desires and ungodly ambitions. In the high name of Jesus, I come against every demon of jealousy, strife, lust, arrogance, witchcraft, arrogance, manipulation, ununified prayer, a lone wolf mentality, an unteachable spirit, distraction, disrespect, misrepresentation, critical judging, unforgiveness, and I have been adding, I come against a Judas turncoat spirit. I implement and establish the behaviors, characteristics, and directives of the kingdom of God. I put into action the policies of God. I shift climates and alter atmospheres because I am a resistance fighter. These things I declare done and finished in the high name of Jesus Christ. Now, according to Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, as we just read, as I maintain my covenant walk with God, while others will be drying up, I will be flourishing because my case is different. According to Genesis 47, as I seek the kingdom of God first, I will never lack provision according to Exodus 23 and Matthew chapter 6. Because I have made my choice to serve the Lord, I will continually increase more and more and my pathway will become brighter and brighter. As I walk in the light of God's Word, the distractions and devastations of these hard times shall never come near my home, according to Psalms 91. My days of supernatural breakthrough is here, according to Hebrews 11 and Revelations 22. There will be no more dry seasons in my business, in my career, in new beginnings, and in our ministry. According to Exodus 23, my days of total health are here. As giving and receiving becomes my lifestyle, supernatural abundance will be my testimony. According to 2 Corinthians 8 and Philippians chapter 4. From now on, money shall become a non-issue in my life. My days of no manifestation are over. My season of celebration has come. In Jesus' high exalted name, amen and amen. As we continue, I want to begin through the high name of Jesus. I am courageous. I am unstoppable. I am victorious. I am blessed. I am double anointed. I am healed. I am healthy. I am every wit whole. I am confident in Christ Jesus. I am grateful. I am strong. I am favored. I am able. I am powerful. I am fruitful. I am God's masterpiece. And in the name of Jesus, I say, not today, Satan. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I overthrow all transactions contrary to my breakthrough. Every power jamming answers to my prayers disappear. By the blood of Jesus, I shake down the seat of darkness. Right now, 
My prayers have become earthquakes and storms in the camp of the devil against my life. All oh, sickness in my life, known and unknown, receive heavenly storms and earthquakes. In Jesus' name, I command the deep wells within me to be unblocked and break forth. I decree confusion in the enemy's camp. I will break down all strongholds, keeping me from my blessings. I have divine kingdom of solemn and diplomatic immunity from evil that seeks to imprison and entrap me. I have been given angels as my divine escorts and supernatural security. The warrior's double anointing is upon me. Every domain and system that God has assigned me, I take back from the enemy. By the blood of Jesus, I am creating an opulent thinking environment in order to create an opulent life. By the blood of Jesus, I rebuke anything operating against me at night. I will not be tormented at night. Anything operating in the cover of darkness will be exposed. I will not be afraid of the terror by night. And I like this next decree. The day and the night belongs to the Lord. Therefore, I will be blessed by the day and I will be blessed by the night. And I want to add, and during the night seasons, God will give me a song to sing. I command every stubborn, unlike yoke to shatter and break. I shall receive what things God has assigned me. I weaken, break down, and put pressure every stubborn demon and stronghold. And I call these things done, 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 gone. Seven times means completion. And we call these things done in the mighty name of Jesus. I am telling you, I know that if you have repeated these decrees after me, you have felt the presence of God. You have felt the anointing of God as I have been feeling. That is why you have heard me with pressure saying different words and different phrases in the course of these decrees. Friend of mine, once again, you are holding a court order. These things I decree done in the mighty name of Jesus. Because tomorrow, as I've already said, tomorrow God says, now I want you to turn it around. I want you to begin to thank me that those decrees are done. I want you to get it deep down in your spirit and that there will be nothing that the devil will be able to use against you to separate you from believing wholeheartedly that it is done in the high name of Jesus. Once again, Paul said in Hebrews that we are to hold fast our confession without wavering because he is faithful that promised it. He's faithful that promised it. And our covenant, this new covenant has been built upon better promises. Friend of mine, God has released us and saying now, I want you to begin to praise me. I want you to begin to thank me that it is done. So live in the done tomorrow. Live it in your spirit. That when you begin to decree those things beginning Thursday, you decree it Friday, you decree it Saturday and Sunday, and you start all over next week. You live in the already done. It's already done. God is saying, don't just thank me tomorrow. But every time you, you decree these things, I want you to thank me that it is done. Praise me that it is finished and that we see it. In the spirit realm, it becomes a conviction in our spirit that it is done once and for all. Hallelujah! 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 And so I want to end with this once again to what it said in verse 18 
of Isaiah 43, what it's talking about, the miracles of the past will seem feeble and unimpressive when compared to those happening now. That is the foundation of what God dealt with me all afternoon that is forthcoming. And so, as I always say, keep your head up. Don't discard your napkin. Keep your knees bent. And close it out for us, Hannah. Amen, amen. I don't know about y'all, but I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to see the things that God is going to be doing. You know what? I don't have to wait. It's already here. And the next time I do these decrees, I will be thanking God for what has already happened and what's already come to pass. Let's get it in our minds that these things that we're thanking God about has already happened. We're thanking him for something he's already done. I encourage you, people of God, don't forget to be thanking him for these things. Don't forget to be thanking him in each of these decrees because we're declaring gratefulness. We're decreeing victory in Jesus' name. And I just can't wait to do it. You know, I think I'm just going to do that as soon as possible. <laughs> I just can't wait to say thank you, Jesus, for each and every one of those things. In Jesus' name, I'm so excited. Thank you, Apostle, for such a great word. People of God, don't forget to be sending in your prayer requests. Don't forget to be sending in your testimonies, the testimonies of the things that God will be doing. And I don't know about you, but I'm just expecting to see those testimonies rolling in on Sunday. I'm just so thankful. Thank you, Jesus, for the way that you moved tonight, the way that you shifted the atmosphere. We're so grateful for it. Thank you, Lord. You know, a way to show gratitude and thankfulness to the Lord is to give in tithes and an offering. And there's many ways popping up on the bottom of the screen. If you want to text to give, text the word give to the number 1214-949-8858. There's other ways to give as well on the website as well as mailing in anything that you wanted to. And we just thank you so much for tuning in to such a powerful word. I encourage you to go back and listen to it and have Apostle decree those things over you. People of God, I can't wait to hear what the Lord is going to be doing in your lives. And as Apostle always says, keep your head up and your knees bent and your napkin in your hand. And I just wanted to add a little something and thankfulness to your decrees in Jesus' name.